Welcome to part four of Pimp My Chaos Lord. Now I'm going to pause the video here for just a second so you can see what I have. I have a pin. This is a standard pin from a sewing kit. Um, you can buy them from Walmart. A huge pack of them. I use them quite a bit whenever I'm doing this micro work. I use them to hold and stabilize anything that's going to be small enough and so small that it doesn't really hold its own weight. They're really nice. They fit well. You can drill it out and put it in both sides. You can even almost put it together without glue. And this three-piece sword, I'm going to be using it quite a bit. Um, one piece is going into the pommel here, and the other piece you'll see in just a second I'm going to be putting into the other side of the sword. Right now, I'm just finishing up drilling out the hand, and I will slide that guy right in there just to make sure it fits and looks good. So now that I have my pin pushed through the hand, um, you can see it's sticking out the top there pretty well. Um, the, the blade part of the sword will go into the other portion here, and I'm actually going to trim it down just a little bit so it doesn't go quite up in there. But what this is going to do is it's going to add a lot of stability to the model. Um, if anybody's ever made any custom weapons before, you know that that tends to be a problem. Whenever you put them together, uh, stuff falls apart. Well, I've found that there's no easier solution than that than putting bits of metal in there. It makes it pretty sturdy, easier to put together, and keeps things nice and lined up. One of the nice side effects is that my handle will be straight lined up with my sword. Um, <laughs> it would kind of stink to do all this work to have it end up off kilter or moved off to the side. You can also see me drilling out a little bit and doing some more steady work on here. So I'm just going to uh, let you walk me, watch me work for just a minute. Here we go. You also notice that I use the uh, X-Acto knife to start my hole a little bit. It's because the tips of the drills aren't quite as sharp as I want them to be, and the tip of the razor of the X-Acto knife works out pretty good. Keep in mind, whenever you're doing this, you want to be very, very slow and very, very steady, especially if you have a thinner sword or a thinner thing that you're drilling through. Last thing you want to do is poke out the top or out the side of that. You want to make sure that it's perfectly lined up, and again, there's no better way to do this in practice. There's no easy way around it. It's just a matter of keeping everything straight, being very, very slow and steady. Again, cannot recommend it enough. Do it by hand. Don't use a Dremel tool. It's the only way that you're going to make it perfect. So you'll notice here that there's a little bit of leftover space, and I also use the drill to kind of measure because I'm going to cut off the pin here in just a second. Um, you don't want to cut it off until you're completely ready because you want to make sure that you have the, as much as possible. But I got a pretty good measurement there so because the more metal in there, the more sturdy it's going to be. But um, you still may have to cut it off a little bit, and that's exactly what I did here. And there you have it. One extremely stupidly large sword that's going to look a little bit goofy, but that's kind of the theme of the army. It maybe is overcompensating for something. Either way, it's going to be unique, and I think it's a pretty cool effect, and not something you'll see anywhere else. So moving on, the next thing we're going to work on is magnetization. Check out my magnet here. 
I use the three millimeter by one millimeter magnets. Again, I buy everything from eBay because it's dirt cheap. And the other thing is I want my army to be pretty well um, interchangeable. Magnetization has a lot of benefits. Um, specifically with this one, this is supposed to be the murder sword. Um, it is kind of a neat option, but not always something I'll want on my Chaos Lord. Um, you know, maybe sometimes I'll want to give him lightning claws or whatever, which is one of the reasons why I'm using one of my old Terminators to match up my magnets. The big thing you want to remember about magnets is that they're, they're polarized, so one side doesn't always stick to the other side. Um, I'm not going to get into the physics of magnets here, because fuck magnets, how do they work? Who knows? Bottom line is, um, they need to be going the same way every time. So what I'll do is I'll I use high glue to hold them in place, and I'll put my magnets on one of my models already. Put a little bit of the high glue in there, and then push it in, just like you just saw here. It gives me a nice, even, good fit with my magnet. Slides up the shoulders just right, and I don't have to worry about the polarization being off. My entire army is done on the same polarization scheme. I couldn't tell you if it was positive or negative on which side or whatever. I just know that they all work and they're all interchangeable because of the way I do it. Um, I know some people that even go so far as to paint one side of the magnet to keep them straight. I don't. I don't mess with it. There's no need if you do it the way that I do it and just do it the same way every time. Also, if you want to test and see that it holds in place. Almost every weapon in my army is magnetized. I like the posability. I like the way it looks and I like the flexibility it gives me. Not only that, you don't have to buy a new model anytime you want to change weapons. Just buy a couple of pieces off of eBay and you're good to go. Plus, it allows you to move it around and uh, pose it a little bit for show and tell. And as you see, this sword looks pretty cool on this little Terminator, even though it's going to be on my lord.